do like to experience some uh, local flavor. And yep. so I asked the people sitting next to me, you know, what is the local beer I should be drinking? And they said Spotted Cow. And I'm like, you know, that doesn't sound that appetizing to me from strictly the name. And that's when I sent you the text. And apparently that was the, the right the right play. And so Not I went terrible, out right? Three or four of them. Shut up and sit down. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Cobblestone Creek, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Mill Home Supper Club, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, and North Star Mohican Casino Resort. What's up, Wisconsin? From the Inside Wisconsin Studios, my name is Trevor Thomas in uh, a cow shirt for Inside Wisconsin. The great John Anderson. What's that? <laughs> what is what is that? It's nice, isn't it? It's I like it. It's not even just a random cow shirt. It's the uh, it's the Green Bay Country Club cow shirt. Ah, that's right. Uh, which which our head pro told us apparently it was an old logo for the club or one of the original ideas for the club. They didn't go for it, and now because everything retro is cool, so suddenly you got a Holstein with a flag on his tail, and we're all in. That's what you know. <laughs> yeah, now it works. Right, because people, you know, we know back up, we like the spotted cows. If they're all one color, then probably we're going to eat them. Yeah. And if they got <laughs> dots, the then we're just going to let them, you know, that's the beverage. <laughs> you know, food, drink them. food and beverage, <laughs> you know, all one color, food, spotted, beverage. <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. I think that's a Holstein, right? I, I'll be honest. I know most of them, but I, I, I don't know that that's not a milking shorthorn or a Guernsey. I think the Guernseys aren't black, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a Holstein. Let's talk about golf because the more we talk about farming, the stupider we're going to sound. I just pleaded, yeah. That's it. Really? Come my- on, I because I know all the dairy cows. I know most of them. I don't. I, have you not been to the World Dairy Expo in Madison? I have. Okay. Just didn't take a lot of notes, to be honest. See, and I went with a guy at Mizzou who's a, a, a teammate of mine for one year named John Shear. I don't know why we get on these tangents, uh, but John, uh, he was he was he was an agriculture major at Mizzou. Oddly enough. He had a um, he had a, a grandparents who had a farm in Bondwell, right? Bondwell of yeah. all the places. So we went up, and we saw his grandparents, but we stopped at the World Dairy Expo, and so they were at the were at the showing, and they, you know, here comes the, the cow out into the ring, and you know they're giving them the one. So it's like the dog show, right? Like the only it's it's with a cow. Yep. And I'm like, okay, how can I tell if that's, you know, why, why do I know? The, and he goes, oh, look, big, nice, open ribbing. Look at the size. The udder is really, you know, it's full. And I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm so that I didn't take notes on, but I did, you know, but like I said, you know, get your jerseys, your Guernseys, your Holsteins, your milking short homes. I'm in on some of those. Way to go. More, <laughs> more power to you. I'm out. Uh, you know who I'll, would be baffled by this conversation, really, though? Steve Levy. My boy, Steve Levy. No <laughs> yeah. shot. Not yeah. a okay, so this is fun, John. Uh, you and I and Bucci spent some time when you were together here for the weekend. Yeah. We knew we wanted to talk about that. And then we're like, what about Steve Levy? He was just here for Monday Night Football. So this episode is being coined J.A.'s ESPN Buddies. Real fun. And it's all about Wisconsin. So right. tell us about these guys, Steve Levy, John Bucci Gross. I mean, what's the scoop? Well, first, I'd like to, to clarify, like, I have more than two buddies. Fair. These are just the only two we could fit on the show uh, at the time, right? I like to think that, I mean, listen, there's 5,000 people, uh, employees on the ESPN campus alone. So, you know, I like, I would venture to say that I could count all my buddies on two hands. It takes at least that. Anyway, no. Uh, two of my favorite guys, I'm really fortunate. Like, we're kind of old school dudes that yeah. have been there a long time. Uh, Levy's got the most tenure at 27 years now and Bucci's kind of 25 and I'm 23. So um, in terms of tenure, and then we're all the same age. That's how you figure out how old the Super Bowl is. If you just ask myself or Bucci or Levy, uh, how old are you right now when the Super Bowl hits and you go on 56, then, you know, it's Super Bowl 56. Um, We had a bunch of 56ers, Carl Ravage, 56. Uh, God rest his soul. What a great man. Stuart Scott would have been 56. Uh, so it was kind of fun. We had all of them um, that, that those guys came through. But they're two really great guys. They're two guys that I love to do the show with. 
um, sort of similar sensibilities, grew up on the same thing. So we talk the same language. I know you and I joke sometimes about things that, you know, that, that, that I grew up with that you did not, but we all have those same things. So like when, um, you know, Bucci and I, and part of the reason he came back was, and you'll hear for the Steelers game is that when we think of the Steelers, right. He and I think of, uh, Ham and me, Joe Green and and Terry Bradshaw and not Troy Palomalu first or Ben Roethlisberger. Um, some of those things. Levy's the same way, right? He he remembers the Jets in the AFL for goodness sake. Um, so all of them, uh, all those things, shared experiences and just really good guys. And you work with somebody long enough, you kind of learn their picadillos, so then you can poke at them, and it's great fun. But um, and the other thing that you'd find is probably the opinion you have them on TV, which I hope is positive. I think it is, is they're very much that same guy, the guy you see on TV, which he making a joke about uh, chicken parm or the guy when he dangles playing hockey. Um, that's who he is. Once he gets off the set, uh, Steve Levy is the exact same way. Like those guys, you're like, Oh, that the person I know from TV is the person you're going to see. And that's not always the case, right? Sometimes we go, oh, that guy on TV is great. And then you walk on, you go, I don't even know who that person is, and let alone I don't like him. But uh, really good people. Um, uh, don't know that Levy could survive in Wisconsin. No chance. Bucci could. Yes, he could. Yeah. Levy could not. There's a, a bit of this episode, J.A., that feels like three men and a baby. Like <laughs> it's you three at 56, and I'm over here going, hey, guys. Can I play? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we don't have to change it, which is good. Um, <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> but there is. Listen, there's all, all I'm going to say is this. And I, 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 if I haven't, I'm going to say it a lot. Uh, who, who coached the Packers to five championships in the Lombardi? Season? Okay. So if you know that, you can know the rest of it. Because you know why? I was yeah. barely alive for that. Right. And yet I know. I tell, this, I tell this to the say, I tell this to kids at ESPN when they're like, well, that was before my time. And I go, hey, who was the president during the Civil War? And they go, Abraham Lincoln said, wasn't alive for that either, but you knew it. <laughs> so there, there's nothing that precludes you from learning history. And that, yeah. that, that, that makes us smarter. I would, here's, here's the lesson of the day, kids. Be entertained by Bucci and Levy, okay? But uh, study history and learn grammar. I'm out. I'm on it. Steve Levy's up first on Inside Wisconsin. Shut up and sit down. So here's Steve Levy uh, from his car. Trevor's got a fifteen thousand dollar, whatever it is, grand studio. <laughs> yeah. Levy's got Le Levy's got an SUV. I think that works out just fine. Might be uh, more than fifteen grand. Off, just the name of the show is Inside Wisconsin. Oh, See, is, is, is Wisconsin your favorite uh, midwestern state? I'm trying to think if I can name any other midwestern states. You know me, I'm an East Coast <laughs> West Coast guy. Wait, there are other states. Are where, like, where am I from? Texas? Nope. Wow. Wisconsin. Close. Yeah. Yes. And and Wisconsin not Ohio, it's not Indiana, it's not Iowa, it's none of those. No, but you uh you did go to Missouri. Right. Which is so it's all pretty much it's it's one big one big place to you, right? Pretty much. Yeah. But you love it. It's okay. Which one? All of them. Okay, so probably uh, this one. I I've, I've always enjoyed my time in Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> In all my many stops, hang on, no, no, I've been to Madison. I've done, a, I've done a, a bunch of college football games in Madison too. That's still in Wisconsin, right? Yeah. See, there you go. You're down. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been to Wrightstown? No, I don't think. Where's that? <laughs> what is south of here? So, uh, so we're in Green Bay, and I, I took a picture of this sign. And I, maybe I said it to you. Maybe I didn't. What's the really long town next to Green Bay? Ogachapwabi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ash Wabanon. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, it's kind of, I'm not I'm not from there. Yeah. Kind of a Tony suburb. Yeah. It's uh so we went, you know, the, the facility, I guess, you know, Lambeau and then the practice facility across the street, like, you know, one block over is that that fine <laughs> town or enclave. Sure. Yes. Yeah. I say Hamlet. A Hamlet. <laughs> say it again. How do you say it again? Ash Wabanon. Oh yeah. Everybody knows. You're right that. there. <laughs> All right. So All right, we're not so here to just make fun that, that you always because you poke fun at me from being I, I think you and I are always like that scene in Min in Miracle when the Wisconsin or the Minnesota and the Boston guys get together. I feel like you think I'm a bumpkin and I think you're a city slicker. Like you could take the subway and <laughs> I would be lost for four days down there. And you know, so yeah. you gotta know your limitations on this thing. 
So that's why, hey, that's, why we're we're together, bud. that's why we're a great combination. That we got we draw on each other's experiences. We had it all covered, yeah. We got it right. <laughs> so listen, you've been to a lot of places, you've done a ton of games. Just tell me what it's like to do a game at Lambeau Field. So honestly, um, I, people ask this all the time, like my favorite three atmospheres in the NFL. And this is as a fan and uh, working a game. And Lambeau and Green Bay is in the top three. I've got Green Bay, Kansas City, Seattle in some order. And uh, and like I said, I've had the benefit of going to a game as a fan too, which was really, really cool. Uh, I'll just give you that quick story. So um, for, your, for your massive audience here, John, because I know you already know it, but a few years ago, the Patriots were in town, and uh, a bunch of the Boston guys wanted to go, and so we went to the game. And these are, you know, big time, let's say stereotypical Boston, Massachusetts, New England type fans. Got the it. jerseys, hearty accents, hearty <laughs> attitudes, hearty appetites for everything. Anyway, the locals could not have been nicer. Could not have been nicer. And it was November. We still had cold beer, and it was freezing on the aluminum benches and all that. And we had the best time, right? We had we had the best, best time. It was such a great experience. We did the, uh, the Butterburger thing as well at first. And uh, I keep looking around for the Four Seasons of Ritz-Carlton. I haven't noticed one yet. Uh, but, we, you know, we had a great time there. And then broadcasting, bud, is like uh, – you know, it's got it's got all the modern conveniences and still has somehow kept sort of the old fashioned charm. Like the, the broadcast booth is unbelievable, and so it's a great setup. And just the people are so nice, the fans, uh, the staffers there, everybody there. So uh, it just makes for an overall great experience. And I guess my my wrap up there is both as a, as a professional working there and just as a football fan to be able to go have a good time every time I go, but. Yeah, you can thank Brown County for that one. We've been paying for that beautiful <laughs> little box that you get to sit in for uh, quite some time now, but that saved the team. We're all in. So John sent me a text uh, on a Friday that you were in town, Steve, and he said, hey, Levy wants to go someplace, have a great meal, and see some things. And I'm like, where are we going here? And my first response was, I'll go pick him up. We'll go out to dinner. I'll show him some things. And John's like, no, no, no. Just tell me where he needs to go and eat. So out of curiosity, where the hell did you go to eat that night? I never got the follow-up. So, yeah. So this is a good story and then a not such a good story. Uh, first of all, Trevor, you should have come pick me up. Could have used a running mate there. Uh, hey. how, how come Anderson doesn't know where to go? What what's, what does that say about him, you know? <laughs> Spend some so time. So I wound up at that uh, the chop the chop house, right? The chop house? Yeah. Yep. Republic chop house, yep. Right. So we went up there. I uh, had a very nice meal. And uh, I wound up leaving my credit card there. I'm a good tipper, but not that good a tipper. And uh, I left my credit card there. And so uh, the next, I didn't realize that till the next night. And I wound up saying, I got to go back and get my credit card. So I wound up eating there both nights. That's how that went nice. out. <laughs> out of convenience. And uh figured they were going to charge my card twice anyway. So I might as well uh, get a second good meal. But it's a great place. People are very nice. Uh, watch the Sunday night game there. So it's a great setup, man. The whole town's great. Everything's really close. Convenient. I love the airport. Even I'm a big <laughs> fan of. Uh, yeah. How do you say the name of the airport there? What's that? Come on, <laughs> it's Austin Straub Airport. Oh, are those Lee Steinberg? No, it's the. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> <laughs> great so, airport. I I'm curious when you're in these different cities, Steve, and specifically here in Green Bay. Our friends at Festival are the official tailgate headquarters of Lambeau Field, and do you get to? participate or view or see or i mean what does that look like for you on a game day are you just in there so early you don't even get to see it so that's really the big part and uh that's really the only time i question my job like listen <laughs> this is obviously the greatest job ever certainly for someone like me where i came from this was this was the single dream job and there's only one seat and now i'm trying to you know fight everybody off and try to hang on to it for a little longer um but I do rethink it a little bit because, yes, we get there really early, maybe three and a half hours before the game. And so usually we're driving through or walking through whatever. And so we see it. And everybody in every city is so happy, right? They're so excited. They're tailgating. They're with their buddies. The food and drink looks all great. And they're going to have an awesome night. And they're not wearing a suit and tie, right? They're in comfortable clothing or a sweatshirt, a hoodie, whatever. And I'm all dressed cheese up. Cheesehead. Get cheesehead in your case, yeah. right? And so that's the only time, like, 
damn, that looks like a lot of fun. I'd like to be doing that. And then I rethink, you know, the rest of my life. And I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll hang on to this and I'll, I'll give up the tailgating. And then, you know, when I'm 85, I'll be able to go and go tailgate through these parking lots. I'll pick you up that day. Thank You're you. in your ride. If you were to tailgate, do you see yourself, would you wear a cheese head or are you wear now, would you wear the, the sombrero? Yeah, the senior sombrero thing, senior cheese head, that, that turned out to be a really cool story. We found out about that really like the day before. John Sutcliffe, who does a great job on uh, ESPN Deportes, uh, he clued us all in on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't think I could do the cheese head thing, man. I did, <laughs> I did the fake Lambo leap outside. You know, they had that set up for fans to take pictures. Like that was yeah. really cool. Yeah, it was about, a, you know, I'm not really a touristy type, but that I did that. I did take that picture, and that was fun. Yeah, I can't see doing the cheese head thing, man. Yeah. It, if you're not touristy, where were you when you sent me the text? I'm sitting here drinking something called a spotted cow, WTF. I, <laughs> I was in that same chop house. Okay. I do like to experience some uh, local flavor. And yep. so I asked the people sitting next to me, you know, what is the local beer I should be drinking? And they said spotted cow. And I'm like, you know, that doesn't sound that appetizing to me from strictly the name. And that's when I sent you the text. And apparently that was the, the right the right play. And so Not I went terrible, out, right? Three or four of them. Yeah, really good. It's a good what, play. What's uh, What was Aaron like? Is he in these things? Is he is he all business? Is he playful? Is he what, what's he like when you prepare a game with him? Uh my single favorite interview on these kind of games is Aaron Rodgers. And, uh, uh -huh. no, he's not playful. He was only playful when I bring up Kenny Maine's name. Sure. I try, I try to use that as a soft spot landing, you know, uh, and the, to get in. But, no, he gives us, I'd say, the most time of any starting quarterback in the league, which is really cool. Uh, I find him so thoughtful, uh, so insightful, kind of like he is at the line of scrimmage. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, he is the ultimate thinking man's quarterback. And um, I would say we spend the mo – so he gives us the most time, and then I would say we spend the most time of any quarterback talking about stuff outside of football. You know, uh, he's been such a proponent of mental health, which has really become a, uh, a point of emphasis around the NFL now this year more than ever. And so uh, he'll talk about other players, other places, um, coaching and, st and, and stuff like that. And – we sort of touched on, um, you know, what went, what transpired in the off season, and that's a tricky thing to go back to, right? So, so for us, you know, it's for us. We're here for the first time. It's week two. They weren't on full national TV week one, so we feel like it's still an important story. But Aaron's been talking about it for you know four weeks, or sure, camp, six weeks, whatever. So that was a tricky road to go down. But you know, Riddick and Greasy are pretty much all X's and O's. So I and Lisa and I are the ones who sort of go in on that. And I said to him, this I thought this was interesting. And I said, uh, if you could change anything, I really try to keep it open ended for him. If you could change anything about the way everything went down in your off season, what would you change? Mm -hmm. And he thought about it. He said, I would change one thing. I would crush the leak from draft night. Remember when Kate was reporting yep. that half night Schefter had the story from wherever he got it mm -hmm. uh, that he wanted out of Green Bay or wasn't going to return to Green Bay. And he said, I would I would crush that. He said, I went to all my people. And he said, when I mean my people, I mean my agent, who assures me it wasn't coming from him. Uh, he said he never wants to take away the focus from the kids who were getting drafted on that night. But so, so while that was cool, his real main point, his hidden point was, nah, he wouldn't have changed anything. He wanted right. to go do and and see the world and have all his fun and his comments about the front office, the organization. He meant every word of that. Uh, he was in control of the situation. And in the end, he got exactly what he wanted because if he didn't in the negotiation, like anybody else, uh, he wouldn't have come to this yeah. agreement. So, so I think it worked out for him, but I find him uh, very forthright, uh, super insightful. I love talking to him. I very much appreciate his time because I know how in demand he is. And I also respect the, uh, all the things he's willing to talk about and get into except, uh, other than football. I know we're pressed on time. We got to talk a little hockey though, real quick, Steve, in my research, I noticed that you and I have something in common. It's this NHL game in 2000, May 4th, 2000, the Pittsburgh Penguins, Philadelphia Flyers, five overtimes. I was working at a Wisconsin radio station. And for some reason we had that game on our AM station on low power 
I've never been so bored in my life. <laughs> Seven hours of AM national hockey that has nothing to do with Wisconsin, but there I was. So I felt your pain on that. I wanted you to know that. When it comes to Wisconsin hockey, what do you think of, and could we ever get an NHL team here? Uh, I think of Chris Chelios, right? Is that fair? Yep. Yeah. Chelly uh, will be uh, one of my partners on, uh, on ESPN's National Hockey Night again on the, on the studio side. We uh, rehearsed with Mark Messier and John Tortorelli yesterday. That'll be fun. We'll start that next week. Uh, listen, for an NHL team, I really don't know. It, you know what it's about now? I get this in Hartford all the time. People want the Whalers to come back. It's really about the building. So you need and, – and it's really about the B, right? You, you need the billionaire now. I'm not sure the millionaire can do it anymore. Mm-hmm. And you need a place with massive corporate dollars to buy the luxury suites. And so it's, it's really less almost about the interest in the team and fan base and ge- even geography. It's, it's really about um, the structure of the, the, fin- the finances from deep pockets to corporate to real estate to the building, right? So you need sort of all those four giant things – before you even make it into the conversation. And I, I think that makes it really hard. I did yeah. drive by that that little arena by Lam, Lambeau. Is that with a the rush was center? Running? Little. Yeah. Little. What's the capacity there? 10,000. Oh, all right, it's bigger than I thought. See, there you go. <laughs> Big enough for your girl, Carrie Underwood, or whoever it is. No, she's not on your show. Carrie Underwood's not on our air, right? No, she's the other one. Sunday, we do Monday, yeah. Who sings for us? Susie Culver, who sings? I don't even know. (laughs) Susie Culver. Little Richard. Little Richard sings for us, yeah. Could be that. Hey, before I before I let you go, this is our last thing because I know uh, people. I I think people will be fascinated about this between again when we talk about the differences where we grew up. And I'll never forget you told me that you love summer camp because it's when you got to see grass. And I don't know that people in Wisconsin get that idea. Right. But that literally, that was your thing growing up out on Long Island. Yeah, so we just didn't have a backyard. I mean, that that's really what it is. I mean, so so we had a you know we had a small patch of grass. I would say not really a backyard at all, and obviously no pool. We grew up playing. We played we played baseball on cement. I mean, we did. It was like you know we'd play with a softball on like a basketball court, and, uh, and this would be in Queens, and, and you know in one of the boroughs. And so we would take over a basketball court with a softball and play on cement. And so it was like AstroTurf, right? I mean, every shot, every ground ball was a bullet <laughs> view, right? And, uh, you know, the, the right the, the right field fence was so short, if you hit it over that, you were called out because it was so short. And it was a neighborhood. You'd hit into somebody's, you know, apartment. So, so you only had to hit it to left field. You couldn't – only the toughest guys slid, right? Because, again, <laughs> asshole. Oh. Right. Ooh. So anyway, yeah. so yes, so summer camp was sort of our ticket out, a pool, a lake. And uh, the other one, I did go to a very small camp. And I, I think I've told you the story, the water skiing. We did have a lake, but it was not big enough for a boat. So <laughs> there was a giant pole in the middle of the lake and it would just pull you around in a, in a circle <laughs> for the water skiing. So if you got good, you were just getting really dizzy. Right. I mean, that's it. So. So listen, it's everything I had sort of, you know, baby steps here. And that's why we went to summer camp. And even when we got there, it wasn't exactly what people might think of summer camps. So. By the way, that's called a pond. Yeah. Could be. Pool, or pool, pool in a pool. pond. Yeah. Pond be good for you. Hey, brother, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Take care of the kids. Uh, we'll see yeah. you on Monday nights. And then we'll see you throughout the hockey season, which will be awesome. Uh, you know, as good as you are, and I love you on my football, sort of have you have you back in your, you know, a duck on his pond uh, in your familiar water, that'll be great. And I can't wait to follow another one of those Levy five overtime games. You, you have no <laughs> idea how excited I am at the prospect of that. I love you, John. Trevor, thanks for having me on, bud. Cheers, Cheers man. Bud. Thanks, buddy. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Bay Care Clinic, Cobblestone Creek, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Mill Home Supper Club, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, and North Star Mohican Casino Resort. Helpful critiques, ideas, great stories, people we should know, the great bar in your town, the fish fry you want to know, the fish boil, anything that you want to reach out to us with. We are happy. We are here. You can be the inputters. We're here to listen. J.A., I think our friends at Festival Foods, who are the official tailgate headquarters of the Green Bay Packers, are doing right. something right. If Steve Levy can't get from Lodge Kohler 
and across the street to Lambeau Field without driving a car. That's a good time. Tell me, what am I missing? Well, but think about it. First off, if your name is Steve TV Levy, right away. So and there's two, there's two, there's two W. You got Steve TV Levy rhymes, and then you have television's John Bucci Gross. Right. Those are two, those are actually how they're how they're designated. Levy's got a lot of names. He's he's leaves, he's the bag of leaves. Sometimes it's just the bag, Steve TV Levy. Um, but when he goes, like, listen, he's he, you can't just walk across the parking lot when you're Steve Levy and you got Lewis Riddick with you and Brian Greasy and security, right? Like when Bucci and I are there, we roamed about freely. And my and my buddy Raj, because people weren't really expecting him to see him, you know? And so you get a lot of, they're walking, they're walking like that guy looks like, and that's all you hear. And then you're by him and they might say, Le and by that time you're gone and they can't chase you down because there's a crowd. But if you're Steve TV Levy, whole different animal. <laughs> Just Steve as long as it's TV. not an actual animal, because then he's going to have trouble with that. We're going someplace with this. Steve TV Levy. And yeah. now this next guy nicknamed me the weekend you were here, Leaf Eater. Yeah. <laughs> John Buchagross yeah. is next. Right. I mean, well, all right. So, okay, give so us the Bucci here, explain this. You know, here's why. Explain. Here's how we do this. Just stand up right now. Don't change your camera. Just stand up. Okay, I'm, and I'm don't break it. your leg doing it, because I know Thank you've you. done that before. One time. How many? See? Okay. There you go, people. Hence the leaf eater. Now we know. Large mammal. Yeah. All right. Give us the quick rundown of television's John Bouchergrass. What do we need to know? Uh, Steubenville, Ohio. He is an Ohio guy. He is a um, uh, Pennsylvania guy from where he grew up. Um, you know, I very first show, I, I, I read the little sort of ditty that I did for the paper about Sears. His dad was a Sears employee, so we, we, we are bond by, you know, by Kenmore washers and dryers, um, <laughs> basically, um, craftsman tools. But he is, I think of this way, he went to Heidelberg and Heidelberg College. You know what Heidelberg College is? Uh, Not a clue. Year? I thought you just talked about the blimp for a second, speaking of history. They are the student princes. And Steve Levy is great, and he's the king of TV. Bucci is a prince of a human being. He went to the right spot. You will find no one that is a nicer guy. You will find no one that is, um, in terms of history, he is well-versed in about every subject. Um, encyclopedic knowledge of music, he's great. Um, yeah, I mean, we just we had the greatest just jams on the way up, and the, the car the, exploded with with music of all generations. That was awesome. fantastic. Everything from, you know, Sinatra to, to uh, NWA. It was great. So good stuff, but just, you won't find a better guy. And like I said, really a smart, intelligent, well thought out guy and um, funny as all get out. And by the way, can just hit a golf ball. Like nobody should be allowed to hit it. It's ridiculous. He did yeah. his best to help me with that. We're still working on it. All right, here we go. Television's John Bouchergross. Shut up and sit down. So here he is, John Bouchergross. As you can see, Trevor, we have matching T-shirts. Uh, if we took these off, we also have matching back tattoos now. And we <laughs> have one on the inner thigh. Where did I, I must have missed all that. I mean, I was there when you guys bought the T-shirts, but I'm kind of glad I wasn't there for the rest of that. Not <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there were a few things that it, sometimes it's better not to know so, th th those things. So... Um, Butch and I had a great weekend. We were there four days. You say you don't want to talk about the Chicago part, so we'll take yeah. If we'll we could just take the border north, north. Marge Keys Castle. Yeah, there you go. That's good. That's fine. So, honestly, Butch, right? And we played Milwaukee Country Club, and we could have with no, with absolutely no um, disrespect, we could have turned around after that and just gone home. Right? <laughs> it was that fantastic. Wow. Well, I, you know, I I primarily came for the Packer. Steeler game at Lambeau. That was obviously the impetus to make this little long weekend happen when the schedule came out. Came out over the summer. I looked at John. We were doing Sports Center. I had my laptop up and I go, John, Steelers at Packers. I've never been to Lambeau. Let's do something. And then from there, it turned into just an amazing four day trip. Uh, yeah, Milwaukee Country Club, top 100 course. I have one of those top 100 courses in the United States, plaques like a life time goal of mine soft goal not a hard goal i'm not going to kill myself but you know it's uh it gives me a, what it, what that plaque has done for me since i got it. it's given me really a kick in the butt to go places it's almost like an incentive let's let's try to make it happen so uh so that was that made that happened it was a beautiful day in milwaukee great company great golf course and that that started the trip off yes so, Bucci, you've been to Wisconsin before, though. This wasn't your first trip to the state, but it was definitely your first trip at Milwaukee Country Club. 
and your first visit to Lambeau, yes? Yeah, not my first cheese curd. I've uh, I, I I played Whistling Straits. I've been to a Brewer game, uh, Brewers Astros back in 2011. It was the night that they filmed the Mister 3000 extra stuff at Miller Park. Oh, so cool. Bernie Mac was there. He was out in the on deck circle, like you know, for 30 quick seconds during the game, like seventh inning stretch. Also during the seventh inning stretch, all the extras sprinted on the field. They took their positions. Obviously, the cameras were ready for them and got a quick, in like literally 30 seconds, they sprinted off. So they did it right in the middle of the game. And they also announced, if you want to stay after the game for more shots, I'm sure they put a bunch of people behind the first baseline and the third baseline. Uh, we had to go, me and my son. It was his 11th birthday. We played whistling in the morning and then went to a Brewer Astro game at night. Lance Berkman broke the Brewers' hearts with a home run. That was Lance in his prime days. Uh, so, yeah, and I've been to Madison a couple times calling college hockey uh, for Madison. So, yes, Anna Blake Jeffrey on charity event one summer as well, which was a great time. So I got Madison in the summer. So, yeah, I, I've been to Wisconsin. I love Wisconsin. I'm an, I'm an Ohio guy. Lots of similarities. Right. What, give me give me a feel for the Midwest because you said that. You know, like uh, uh, it was very nice. You tweeted, I, I, I could move here. I could live here. But but there is something we, we've talked on this show a lot. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily new, unique, but there's certainly certainly in common that that the flyover states the middle of America has, whether it's just a simple hello, whether it's a stop on the side of the road to change your tire, but there's something about these places. Uh, I don't know what it is that bonds them, but there's something about them that connects sort of all those places. It does, yeah. And my definition of the Midwest is Williamsport, Pennsylvania to Breckenridge, Colorado. To me, that is the Midwest. And yeah, I, I can, I'll never forget when you know, I moved to really uh, to New England from Ohio and I really remember from um, my ex-wife, she mentioned how she'd go to the grocery store and like no one was looking at her in Connecticut. No one would talk to you. And uh, that, it, it's really stark. You really notice it, especially when you experience it for the first time. Now, in the end, people in the New England are great in Connecticut and Massachusetts. It just takes them longer to kind of get there. And so it's just so apparent and stark in the Midwest that, yes, there's just an overall warmth of people, an openness, a neighborly cul-de-sac let's have a you know bake sale um kind of a, kind of a vibe that is really cool and i when i go back to steubenville for a high, my high school friends I go back to tiffin ohio the northwest part of ohio up near toledo for the college friends um it, it, it's it is really stark and i miss it and i and i love it and part of me wants to you know return to the midwest and, and teach on campus and coach the golf team and and uh and feel that whole midwest vibe again because it's uh i love it and i feel right at home well, I can confirm you can coach a hell of a golf swing. Uh, and I unfortunately don't think there's enough time left in any of our lives to fix mine. No, Lee I, was Feeder, gonna... I believe in you, Lee Feeder. I think you have the power and the athleticism um, to get it done. I'm not giving up on you, Lee Feeder. I appreciate that. Yeah, Lee Feeder was new, a new one. I've been called a lot of tall things, but it – it took my buddy Adam, who was golfing with us at Green Bay Country Club, just a minute to figure out what Leaf Eater meant. He thought that he was you were referring to my inadequacy of uh, the golf game, but uh, no, yeah. I, I, or maybe he thought you went vegan. But no, it's all because right. of your, it's all because of your height. I liked it. It was good. Uh, my golf game not so good. I'm pretty sure your 11 year old son at Whistling Straits could have beat me that year. I'm fairly <laughs> confident in that. Um, all right, so it wasn't your first trip to Wisconsin, but it was your first trip to Lambeau Field. Yeah. John talks about it when he comes all home. When it, it 1265 is just a unique spot. So walk us through what it was like for you stepping. I mean, you're on the sports center set with John all the time. Uh, a few less days I learned, but nonetheless, all the time. Uh, and maybe the sports thing is, I don't know, as it get old for you too, John and I have had this conversation, but Lambo's a unique spot. So tell us it through your eyes. Yeah. It doesn't get old. Um, first time to green Bay. I was kind of for a while when you're a kid, you're kind of sometimes your loyalties, you have your favorite team. And I grew up a Steeler fan, but sometimes you kind of gravitate to a couple other teams. Uh, I was the Packers for a while, I think because my St. Thomas Aquinas 
uh, school colors in parochial school were, were green and gold. And you know, I went to the Jets once when Richard Todd was there for a while. So you kind of you kind of meander around. But the Packers are always something with those colors. Um, and obviously, I was a huge sports fan growing up. We would write teams letters to, hey, please send us team pictures and stickers. I remember sending the Packers, uh, this is back in the 70s, letters, hey, send me some team pictures and stickers. And, and they would do stuff like that. That's how big teams, their PR department communicated with their fans a little bit. But yeah, I'd never been to Green Bay. Um, you know, so again, a slight connection in terms of as a kid. Also, when I was in, we moved to Steubenville, Ohio. My dad, uh, he always liked to get involved in the in the community, and he was a Sears store manager, so part of the Better Business Bureau and the Chamber of Commerce. And and he wanted to start some. You know, he knew high school football was gigantic in Ohio, so he started a scholarship fund and this pigskin preview where teams could set up you know, their little booths in the mall and get fired up for the season and also have a scholarship angle where each couple seniors might, you know, get a couple hundred bucks. And, and he would, and he found out this guy named Clark Hinkle lived in the area right outside the road in Toronto, Ohio. And he found out he was a hall of famer to play for the green Bay Packers, one of the great football players in the early part of the NFL history. And he said, why are we doing something with this guy? He's a hall of famer. So uh, he was able to get Clark Hinkle and get him involved and have these banquets uh he would contact the hall of fame up in canton ohio short trip away and say hey we want to bring in some speakers here's our budget and he brought down nitschke and lou the two toe groza and and all gail sayers and george blanda and every and it was such a big thrill for clark once a year in the fall to have these guys come down talk to him paul horning came one year i had breakfast with paul horning in my sweats when i was in high school <laughs> um he's in like in a full suit already at 8 a.m at denny's so uh, it was uh, it was really cool that my dad could give Clark Hinkle that last 10 years of his life. So I really make him feel like a hero, bring his name back again. And so, yeah, there's always a Packer connection with me. And so to get to Green Bay and to, it's, you know, like I said, to have Wrigley Field, Fenway Park be the last two great ballparks um, for any sport in North America. Parks where Babe Ruth played. That makes that's always going to make them the best. There's no other parks. All the great hockey arenas are gone. All the great basketball arenas are gone. Madison Square Garden has been redone a lot, but it has some of the same magic. But I mean, Lambeau's it, man. You know that that's where all the greats have played, and so it it stands out on its own among the rest. And I wanted to feel it and experience experience it, and it was just phenomenal. Do you feel though like we kind of missed out on something because we were treated really well? And when John said, "Hey, well, uh, let's go to this game," and I'm like, "Of course, we can use my season ticket, Mr. Big Talker, right?" <laughs> that it's, it's the Milwaukee crowd, so Mr. Big Talker doesn't have tickets. Right. We walked down, we saw my seats, but we're like, that's not where we can go. And the Packers could not have been more generous. President Mark Murphy, uh, Gabriel Dow, who's part of the marketing and fan engagement, she engaged. So we ended up sitting in, in, in a in a box. We're up there. Do you feel like you missed out because it was raining uh, sitting on wet metal bleachers? Would you like to maybe have that experience? <laughs> Yeah, had it been sunny, I might have missed it. Because yeah, when I go to games, whether it's NHL games or baseball games, and uh, I say, yeah, I want to sit in the crowd. I want to you know have a beer and, and be with the fans. That's how I like to yeah. go to games. I don't like to sit in the press area. But we weren't in the press area, so the next best thing on a drizzly uh, a day <laughs> is is being in in a box where I can just house macaroni and cheese for three quarters. I mean, I filled that plate up three times, and it was delicious. <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, so yeah, that was fine on that particular day. But yeah, the fact we got to go down, you showed us your seats we walked uh, amongst the bleachers and then got down on the field before the game which was really cool to be that close and to look up at the stadium from that vantage point i love that whether a ballpark or a football stadium um i really enjoy that too so yeah no it was it all worked out perfect and the, you know, the neighborhoods that surround um uh, uh, the football stadium you know that surround lambo just like fenway park you know fenway park is a residential area wrigley field's a residential area and so again that's what it reminded me of wrigley and fenway and uh, to go from someone's back porch 50 <laughs> feet right through the right through the gates that's, that's unique and cool and we won't see it anywhere else ever again and mm -hmm. i think and for the packers that you know, as long as the 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 economic structure of the league continues i'm sure they're good to be there for another hundred years but certainly we'll never see that again anywhere else new so we did some things where like i said green bay country club we got spoiled we we go there right i i it, we'd had time weather permit i kind of want to go to village greens great nine holer there that i grew up on a punishing right. yeah closing back uh, par fives um so and then we kind of the suite. So so we we had some things where we had some first world issues, but then we did. We were very we were the common man as well. 
So let's just start. We go to a fish fry, which could be any town, any tavern, Wisconsin. Yeah. And uh, and God bless the the folks there at Merrick's. The uh, the the I didn't know they had cod. I'm glad you went there. I'm a perch guy. Should have went. Um, to you're a good solid. You were been an altar boy. So the fish on Friday is not new to you. But did you enjoy the atmosphere of that kind of place? Yeah, I mean, I grew up with uh, fish fries during the high school football season at uh, in Ohio in Steubenville, and then, yeah, then during Lent every Friday there's a fish fry somewhere, and the or you just go crush a fillet of fish. Uh, that, <laughs> that, that, that's back, back then. I don't think people adhere to the no meat on Friday thing as much as they used to, but back in the seventies and eighties they were more they were eighty percent in, so the, the fillet of fish boom certainly was a thing, it's kind of like the McRib is now. Um, so yeah, so to experience that the cheese curds, I know you're anti cheese curds, John. I am not a little bit. I, yep. I, I got my curds. I got my fried cod, and then I asked for a little bit of bourbon, and they gave me a gallon. <laughs> it was big. It was that big. If you I'm want to look at, I'm not a big sniffer guy, so no, I want I want the big round glass to put my bourbon in. So I, thought, I just thought you would take the sniffer amount and just put it in my round glass. You know, one finger, two, three, whatever, two or three fingers, but. God bless her heart. Again, the Midwest, the, she filled it up to the brim. Trevor, what you didn't see is the next night when we went to dinner at the Union Hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John was helping people name babies. It's what I do. I did it back in my hockey column on dot com. I kind of have a gift for it. Uh, <laughs> no, no big deal. But yeah, there was this, uh, it was a great bar, too. The, the, I love the bar shape there. It's like a big boomerang. Very So you can kind of see, you can talk, and it's very easy to communicate and talk and and uh, yeah, there were you know there were four or five people there at the bar. One one other woman was pregnant, not drinking, um, but her husband was there. And another couple and just had a, you know I, I, we, I bought them around the shots. Let's do let's do a shot of tequila. Let's do another shot of tequila. And um, and then yeah, we had dinner there with, with you know with John and, and mom, and uh, it was a great time. And so yeah, so we uh, we named a baby. Uh, we gave them a couple options. And uh, we'll see if they follow. Some people do, but you know, yeah, it, it some you know, it's it's about rhythm. It's about syllables. It's about alliteration occasionally. But as you know, John has taught me, alliteration always annoying. So we like to more you know, rhythm, you know, it's a one syllable, two syllable, three syllable name that helps one two. You know, like my son is Brett Monroe Butchergrass. That was one two three. I like one two three syllables. So it's a rhythm to it. So yeah, it, it was a, it was a good night. Had a good ribeye. So that was a sensational time. That's my kind of place. Like that's my kind of. Uh, establishment. I just love the bar, the dinner area, and that was that was a highlight. And you got to be careful. I didn't know this about about naming, right? You got to if you have a soft last name like a a huh or a haze, then you need to we need to punch it up a little in the in the first name. Right, might be, like it might, might be a Catherine Harris. You, you just you want to you don't want Emily Harris or Ashley. You know, yeah, you want to kind of. It's again, it's about rhythm. It's about balance. Life's about balance and uh, an effect. And so, yeah, so that's what we're trying to coach them up on. And, and don't and don't be afraid of the classic names. You know, like, like a good Jack. Like I named my third son Jack back in 1999 because they're just like I said, there weren't there were a lot of soft names back then. Let's give him a good solid name. The guy can get a keychain at the you know at the Cracker Barrel. Get himself a little license plate to put on the back of the bike. Some of these names, these poor kids will never have a keychain or, or or a license plate. We got these. These are the important things in life. And the stories from Wisconsin will not end. Other than we're going to talk a little Wisconsin hockey next because we got the hockey guy from ESPN who just happened to spend four days here in Wisconsin with John Anderson. The stories continue. We'll be right back. This is Inside Wisconsin. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Bay Hair Clinic, Cobblestone Creek, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Mill Home Supper Club, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, and North Star Mohican Casino Resort. Helpful critiques, ideas, great stories, people we should know, the great bar in your town, the fish fry that you want to know, the fish boil, anything that you want to reach out to us with. We are happy. We are here. You can be the inputters. We're here to listen. All right, Pucci, uh, enough about you and I, because we never like to talk about ourselves, as you know. We want to be we want to be humble. We don't want to, you know, okay, fine, we had hole-in-ones in par four, but we don't want to make a big deal out of that thing. Hashtag mm -hmm. humility. Whatever it is. Uh, but hockey season is upon us. Yeah. And then, I think once upon a time, you said to me what you had asked years ago, like, what's your favorite hockey team? And I said, well, the Badgers, right? Because we don't really have a pro hockey team. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the Milwaukee Admirals, shout out to them. They were very good to us. They came find uh, come and find us as we got off the course in Milwaukee Country Club. Um, two sweaters, two awesome sweaters. We're big on that. But, but 
college hockey and the Badgers, and when they're good, they're special down in Madison. You've been to that place. Yeah. Uh, give me a forecast right now where you see uh, the, the Granado Badgers here. Well, on the men's side, obviously it's a rebuilding year. They were loaded last year. That, that was their year possibly to add another national championship to the trophy case. Cole Caulfield, you know, he was the runaway Hobie Baker winner. It was a pleasure to call his games. Like, you know, I called some his freshman year. And then to see him make that huge step Oof. on his sophomore year. And then when he was about to sign and, and when you knew he was going to go pro and people were wondering – you know, could he be a factor? And then and the Canadians sent him down to the minors, and then they didn't dress him for a playoff game. I'm like, what are they doing? This guy <laughs> is Alex Ovechkin skill. Like, his finish, his release, he can score from anywhere. And then we saw what he did in the playoffs, and I, I think he'll win Rookie of the Year this year, over under 35 goals or so. Should play with a good player, Nick Suzuki. So, yeah, that was – they were really loaded last year. Um, they had experience and they had a star, you know, but it, it's hard to win in the NCAA tournament. They're all road games. And with COVID hanging over everybody's, over everybody's head, that had to be a stressful time for those student athletes. Um, <coughs> some games were canceled. So Tony's going to be regrouped this year, but they have a good pipeline of prospects coming in. They have a, they have a good, you know, they do have some experienced guys on the back end, but the women, I mean, they're number one right now in the Bucci main college hockey top 11 poll. Um, <laughs> Screenshot it today. There it is. You can find it on Twitter at any time. So uh, once again, Mark Johnson has a wagon, uh, a Wisconsin wagon filled with women. And, <laughs> and they are good. And, and they, of course, a thrilling national championship last year. Um, this year's the, the women's Frozen Fours at Penn State in Pagula, which is a great place to play. I'd love to be able to call that. I'd like to add that to the broadcasting resume. I haven't called a women's Frozen Four yet. The men are in Boston, so I'll be there this year. So, uh, yeah, so the women, once again, a wagon, the men will see pesky, go root for them, fill the place up. But yeah, I remember talking to Adam Bursch uh, back when I went back to Blake Jeffrey on charity event a few years back, Blake in the Wisconsin Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Uh, but Adam was like, yeah, when I was a kid, I grew up to play for, I, I dreamed of playing for the Badgers, not the NHL. Mm -hmm. That was his dream to play for the Badgers. Like you said, that's the effect they had on people. And it would be great to, uh, to get that back again. So every week we do a top five. Uh, this, this, so we're, we're subletting it this year. We're farming it out uh, like it. to you. So give us the, uh, I know the season just is underway. So we're still going to call it, give me the preseason hashtag college hockey, uh, Bucci main top five men's. Yeah, for the men, well, Michigan, I have Michigan number one. Many don't. They are, they, are, they are loaded with number one draft picks. They have the overall number one pick and the overall number two pick from this past draft, Owen Power, Matty Beneers. Um, they have Kent Johnson, who was the Blue Jackets' first pick, Luke Hughes, Quinn's brother. So um, they are loaded. I have them number one. Most people, you know, put, put a UMass preseason number one because they won last year. But right now yep. – it's Wisconsin. St. Cloud State should be back. They are loaded. They were in the Frozen Four last year. The only D1 sport at that school is hockey. I think they'll be back again. Minnesota State, they just swept UMass, the defending national champions in Amherst. So they certainly are, are, uh, are right there at, uh, at number three. And uh, number four, uh, quite frankly, I forget. <laughs> it's, it's close enough. I don't know. Oh, Minnesota, you know the Golden Gophers. Sorry, Wisconsin. But the Gophers are currently number four, and John gives me a bad look. Damn. I'm sorry. After all you did for me this past weekend, I put the Gophers at four. I could have put, you know, I could have put Northeastern number anybody, but I. No, you know what? I'll take Minnesota over North Dakota still. Okay, still. All right. That's just me. Uh, well, you know, so. How, how did the college, tell people how the college, hashtag college hockey thing not only came along, but it's really exploded, right? Like you, you've, you've attached a whole identity of yourself and the sport. You like, it's, it's amazing how it's intertwined right now. You can't have one without the other. Yeah. I mean, even though, I mean, college basketball was already big in 1980, 81, 82. It was always, it was already huge for 20, 30 years, but Dick Vitale kind of gave the sport pom-poms when ESPN started uh, broadcasting games on a weekly basis. And I think that's all I really did. You know, once I got uh, named the frozen four play-by-play uh, -play guy, nine years ago, I felt like, you know what, I, I, I owe this sport to be all in, to really follow the narrative throughout the season. Just don't show up at the Frozen Four and try to learn players' names. Really be there throughout. Luckily, Twitter's a place you can kind of create your own network of things, your own TV network, your own media network, and just kind of do what you want to do. Be your own producer and just keep it fun. It's always fun for me. And they, all the stuff kind of starts out of thin air, never really well planned. Uh, you know, just me and Van Pelt, when he, back when he did the, the Sports Center, 
um, just kind of doing the Boston accent, different things with the Boston <laughs> accent, and just one day saying college hockey, college hockey, college hockey, you know. And then the whole uh, miracle movie when they ask him, hey, Coxie, why do you play college hockey? <laughs> Isn't it an obvious for the girls? So yeah. I, I, so I just threw college hockey. I, whenever I did a college hockey tweet, I would just put that hashtag college hockey. And just kind of, I notice I, when I do stuff on Twitter, I just pay attention. You can kind of sense what has a little bit of traction, whether it's the chicken parm reviews I currently do, <laughs> or whether it's college hockey or Bucci over. Overtime challenge. I just pay attention. If it got traction, I'll go with it. If it doesn't get any, I cast it aside. You know, it's just some. Again, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm just a, I'm just a, a promoter of sports fun. That's all I want to do. Let's have a little community, a little fun, and uh, and just and, and go with it. If it doesn't work, I cast it aside. If it works, I'll just keep going one step at a time and see how far it takes me. So yeah, we sold hats and T-shirts and giving money away, and now I'm going to have a little name, image, likeness brand ambassadorship with a couple of women's hockey players. I should announce that next week. One is a Badger. Good. And, uh, and one is a Northeastern Husky. So a couple of women, just to give them a chance to make them feel like a big deal, give the women's game some shine. And, um, and so the help, you know, I, I get a hoodie with their, with college hockey and their number on it. So keep it a little bit, a little subtle, but for them, they know it's, it's for them. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to do that for them and to continue help to grow the women's game. You're a conduit of joy. You're a conduit of joy. That's what you are. Yeah. Just join. It doesn't take us long, though, if we get into the conversation and start talking about all the different routes that Wisconsin has in hockey. I mean, we talked about John Cooper was the head coach of the Green Bay Gamblers. Yep. I mean, the Admirals show up at, at Milwaukee Country Club and all the Badgers. <laughs> Do you have a memory, Bucci, where this is the Wisconsin hockey moment that you recall most? Well, I had such a great time at the Blake Jeffrey on uh, charity event a couple of summers ago, three, four summers ago. J.J. Watt showed up and did a penalty shot. Uh, he can really skate. You know, going on afterwards with the guys, going the college corner there and going back into the secret compartments there and, and uh, you know, talking with Joe Pavelski. And we mentioned Adam Burrish. Um, just all the great Wisconsin players. Pat, Pat Derek Stepan had a little charity golf tournament. That was attached to that weekend as well to raise money, which Blake raised a bundle for. Just getting to know Blake Jeffrey on, who's just an A plus human being. Um, yeah, so that whole weekend for me was really my big. And obviously, like I said, I'm friends with Tony Granado, Mark Johnson. Um, just to know these guys on a first name basis, especially Mark Johnson, Miracle on Ice. I'm 13 years old. Did I win the gold medal yeah. without Mark Johnson? I mean, now like you know, he sees me. Hey, John, that still blows my mind. <laughs> you know, that's, like I do not take that stuff for granted. So, uh, so yeah, that was the the Blake event, and then calling a couple games and just going, you know, to call the game, and then you know, I called one last winter with uh, you know Colby Cohen and Sean Richland, and they're great hockey guys, and just to go to a, go to these different bars and these cool spots, it, it's really a big thrill, and and that's the, one of the best parts of the business is all these people you get to meet with, and then meet the, the the people and meet the community, and that's why I love hockey. Hockey is an intimate sport. It's people are fun and they're passionate. You know, they'll they'll cry. They'll get in a fight with you. They'll laugh and they'll cry. And like, that's what I just love that kind of, uh, it's been such a blessing to get involved in hockey because it's such a tight community. You mentioned Mark Johnson uh, in, in high school, which we're the same age uh, yep. with, within a few months. Yep. They had a team that, that won some national championships, but on the same team, they had Chelios, Pat Flatley and Bruce Driver. Like, do you know how many goals and years and all-star games? That is? Just those three, three guys on the same team. And then they had great players beyond that. But right. just those three guys alone is – that's 40 years in the league. Yeah, I wrote a column for ESPN.com, top 20 USA-born hockey players of all time. And, um, you know, Patty Kane ended up being number one. But I had Mark Johnson at number 20. You know, not just because of his miracle on ice and obviously his great coaching career, what he's done at Wisconsin, but he was he was a good NHL player. Unfortunately, he, he got he played on bad teams. He produced at a big level. So when you take it in totality, much like Neil Broughton over in uh, Minnesota, like to me, that's a top 20 hockey life. Like what a, what a career, what a contribution he's made to the game, not only to help miracle on ice of what that did for hockey popularity in the u.s going to the nhl and proving that he was a good player and you can see why they won better than the people probably thought they were the underrated uh you know moniker it's probably overrated now they, they were good yeah. there were guys that went on to have really good careers and now what he's doing to the women's game he's helped growing the women's game which is obviously the part of hockey and part of all sports that has the most growth potential Mm -hmm. um, so man, what a hockey life for Mark Johnson. That's why to me, he's a top 20 USA hockey guy of all time. 
And Chelios would be where? He's got to be in there, right? Yeah, he's top five for me. He's, again, he's part yeah. of our ESPN coverage, which is awesome this year. He'll be on in between periods of our ESPN ABC games with Mark Messier, Steve Levy. I'm doing a couple as, as well. The Seattle Kraken first home games on ESPN. Levy's going to do the play by play. So I'll be in studio in between periods with Mess and Chelios. Did some World Cup stuff with Chelly. Just a, just a monument. No one's ever partied more and been more fit than Chris <laughs> Chelios uh, in his NHL career. That guy played to was like 48, and uh, but in his 40s, that guy's a freak of nature and um, cool family. His daughter's a great hockey broadcaster as well. Boys played at Michigan State. I broadcasted a couple of their games. So, yeah, it's good to have Chelly aboard as well. All right, so tell the people, so we can see the point where, we're going to get some plugs in, you see the yeah. point where? Yeah, a lot of ESPN too, well sometimes we'll be on ESPN, they would have multiple shows next week um, as well, the first week of the NHL season, so it's really well produced, I just got off a, a little Zoom call with Tortorella and Kevin Weeks and Messier will be there and Emily Kaplan, it's really a great chance for hockey to get a one hour show that's going to be really well produced with information and fun, where we're going to have chicken parm reviews as well, and uh, so we're really going to try to make it fun and look at, so yeah, so just look for it in the afternoon afternoon four o'clock espn2 i think is the standard three or four o'clock right around there and uh yeah please follow along uh the most recent chicken parm review uh what's uh, something about what is that acl surgery yeah. first class that well, was actually, a beauty actually, actually the very latest john last night i told tony put that back in the dumpster where you found it <laughs> it wasn't pretty well, always good and then uh we can follow you where at bucci maine yeah, no, at Bucci Gross. Um, Bucci Gross. So yeah, Instagram and and uh, and Twitter at Bucci Gross. They give lots of love to cheese, as John uh, knows. Uh, <laughs> golf, hockey, Midwest, and uh, and cow golf shoes. Spotted Clearly, cow yeah. golf shoes. Yeah, there you go. Bucci, is there anything left on your Wisconsin bucket list as we wrap this up? Great call. Well, I got to play. Um, I got to play the golf courses we haven't played yet. John knows those. Aaron Hills and and uh, what's it? Sand Valley. Is that the other one? Yeah. How about, like, shoot there. a deer? How about away from golf? Do you want to, like, shoot a deer or yeah, run one over? 16,000 of them, you know, are run over every year. <laughs> mm, I sh yeah, that's right. We saw the scoreboard. It's on the highway. Here's 16,000 deer hit last year. And, uh, well, Marco Siki, the, the assistant coach for the men's uh, hockey team, he's a, he's a great charity fishing event. I need to get to that, catch myself a nice big bass in a Wisconsin stream. That could be another thing. But, uh but yeah, I, I got to come up with a maybe a little list that I'll put on the Twitter of things I need to do in Wisconsin, or just again, just crowdsource because the people have great, great yeah. ideas, and like we can accomplish a lot that way. But I'll be back. I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back in Scotty soon enough. Shut up and sit down. Ja, you and I have been buddies for just over ten years, but you you know these guys, and they knew you. That's that is a blast. Thanks for having them come on, man. Do, do you feel like you need a cow shirt now, though, so that you and I, wish you can just be kind of all like right yeah. there. Felt a little out of it for a second. That's all right. That's okay. I, I chose not to buy one. I was there with you. I just I know. I live here. You guys don't. Well, that's because because already the show's gonna have to run for 10 years just so you can wear all your inside Wisconsin <laughs> yes. apparel. I cannot wait until the first frost, J A. Yeah. There will be inside Wisconsin flannel shirts on this show. You wait. It's coming. <laughs> Aren't you pretty soon? Uh, aren't we gonna have to do something where we go into the woods with somebody that wants to, you know, go get themselves? Do I need a doe permit for this show? Come in the coming weeks. Uh, well, the season's open. I've already been in the woods and I've already shot this year an antlerless deer. I have three tags left to fill. There is medicin in the freezer. Let's go. Jeepers! Look at we you. We need the cold weather. We need the cold weather. It is October. Well, that's because here, people with six, eight, three hundred pounds. You guys are listen. By the way, Levy's not that big, heavy sweater. People don't know about that guy. Oh my God! Flop sweats when you're in with him. You gotta. The studio's always. You could hang your venison in there and just you wouldn't even. Have, it just is always so cold in the studio with Levy. It's ridiculous when it comes through. But anyway, we wanted to get cold here. We're ready for it. All right, should, hey, we love you. you tell the people. That if you need a copy of the Bucci Gras Anderson trip to Lambo, if you go to the Press Times website, go go yeah. go PressTimes.com, right? Um, right. Uh, Greg Bates was nice enough to come out and visit with Bucci and I a little bit. So if you want some sort of you know transcript of what's happened, if you want something suitable for framing, you want to mail it to a friend, you want to put in a scrapbook, uh, go over there to GoPressTimes.com and read Greg's article. He was very kind to us. And uh, quoted us accurately, which, you know, my God, that I, I don't know if that happens enough or actually if I needed it embellished. But uh, <laughs> uh, it was really nice of him to come out and do that. And like I said, so now it's there for all of posterity, because as we find out sometimes, once it's on the Internet, it doesn't go away. 
no, it's there forever, which is mm -hmm. just how we are. We are here forever on Inside Wisconsin because we live on the internet. Hey, thank you, everybody, for the shares, the likes, the comments on all the social platforms and definitely here on YouTube. Remember to subscribe, follow us on all of those other platforms, and and we are available on all of the audio podcast platforms too, like Apple and Spotify and Pandora and Amazon. We take this audio without yep. our beautiful faces and we put it out there on the places where you can listen to a podcast so you can <laughs> check this out while driving and do it safely. You just say it. So if you think we're hideous, you can just listen to us. You can just listen to us. Yeah. All right. We love you guys. Until next time, for John, I'm Trevor, as you were, Wisconsin. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Cobblestone Creek, the University of Wisconsin Platteville, Mill Home Supper Club, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, and North Star Mohican Casino Resort. Shut up and sit down.